Hello and welcome to Sudo Canal, the only Sudoku channel hosted by an authentic French duck. I usually do my videos in French, <clears throat> but I've come across the latest video by Mark Goodleaf on Cracking the Cryptic, and he tackled a recent 6x6 Little Killer Sudoku by the excellent Sam Kappelman lines, and here's the puzzle. And <clears throat> he had a somewhat complicated method, and I wanted to show that this puzzle is not as difficult as it seems. Obviously, if you take it the right way, and the right way may be long to figure out. So, here is the solve that I propose, and I'm not solving it live. I've solved it before, and I'm reproducing my train of thought. So, let's focus on the 8 and the 9. And I highlight the squares that are occupied by the numbers in vote. So this is one diagonal, this is the other one. And if you take into account both diagonals, you get a total of 17. Then let's consider the minimum values of those squares. For those four squares, you get a minimum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 10. On those squares, you get a minimum of 1 plus 2 in each column, which makes a total of 6, and then 10 plus 6 is obviously 16. And you see that with minimum values, you almost get to the total we're supposed to get. Therefore, each of those values differ by one at most from the minimum. But then there's this square, and Mark noticed that this square is somewhat constrained to be not too small. And the logic behind it that Mark presented is that this, this one is at minimum six, those ones are 5 and 6, this one 6 for the minimum value. Oh, pardon me, it was the maximum value actually. Those are maximum values which amount to 23. So those have a maximum of 23 and this is a minimum of 3. So, when I said 1 plus 2 minimum, it was actually 1 plus 3. So, if you put a 1 and a 3 here, and all other squares, all other highlighted squares with a minimum value, you get 17. Therefore, those values are the correct ones. And those ones are the correct ones as well. So, these ones are 1 and 2. And these ones here are globally 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, I'll be more precise on those ones. Those ones are 1, 2, 3, 4. And I put the 5 and the 6 in these ones. So, what can be more specific is that those ones can't contain a 4 because 4 plus 3 would be 7, and 8 would go bust. <laughs> you, you'd get 9 at minimum. So the 4 is on this diagonal, and there's a similar logic with the 1. You can't put a 1 in either of these squares, because it would be 4 plus 1, 5, and you wouldn't get to 9 with those numbers. So 1 is in one of those squares and two and three may be distributed in any fashion for the moment. Next, I see there's those squares have to be two and four 
And this is great because we have an X-wing on twos. If two is in here, then two is in here. Otherwise, two is in here and in here. In both cases, this rules out the two for this and this. And we'll see, it will be important later on. Okay, let's focus on 17 now. This time, I'll take into account the maximum values of those squares. Let's say, well, before that, I need to note something. This 6 and this 6 force a 6 into this square. And this is important because the maximum value you get in this square is now 5. It is 5 also in this square because of the 6 in the same column. Now, in those squares, because of the 5 and the 6, these are at most 3 and 4. Now, let's add up those values and we get 10, 17, 18. We get 18 and just like with both diagonals, we get one too much. Therefore, those values are almost the correct ones. One of them has to go down by one unit. So I replace those fives by a choice between four and five. And those ones by a choice between two, three, and four. Except this one can't be a two. So this one is really three or four. Can't be a two because of the one, two pair. This one is still likely to be a two. But now, remember what I said about the X-wing on twos. It can't be a two here, it can't be a two here. Therefore, there is a two in one of those two squares and it rules out the two in here. So this is actually a one-two pair. Almost there. So now we know these are a real three-four pair. So we have seven, eight, and those two must add up to nine. So there must be a four and a five in those squares. And this square sees both of them, therefore it can't be a four and a five, and the only possibility is a three. Now this one must be a four and a five. And where do we go from here? Well, I've done this all a few minutes ago, but I've forgotten. Oh, yes, this three puts a three in this square. Now, this resolves the three, four pair in here. And this four forces the four in this square. And then this 4 forces a 5 in here. And we know that the 5 and the 4, we know that both squares are related by a sum of 9. Therefore, this is a 4 and a 5 up there. Now, now this 4 tells us that the 4 in this row is here and it's a 2 up there and there's a 1 and there's a 2 those rows can be completed this way no mistake here we must have 4 and 5 and there's a 4 this solves 
this pair and we complete the columns 6 and 2 we need 1 and 5 this is 1 and 5 with this 5 now we know that 1 is in here oh this is a 6 this is a 5 this is a 2 this is a 1 and we have we are left with two two three pairs but we can now complete this eight with a three and this completes the soul of this very nice grid this very beautiful puzzle by Sam Kaplan lines thank you for your attention